Session 298, Chapter 2, Verse 271. If you give charity openly, it is good. But if you keep it a secret and give to the needy in private, that is better for you, and it will atone for some of your bad deeds. God is well aware of all that you do. Chapter 2, Verse 271. To close the pathways of stinginess before the human soul, Allah asks you to meet the basic needs of your family first, and only then give a small portion of your excess wealth to the poor. This is only possible if you work to your capacity, not just to meet your basic needs. If everyone worked just to put food on the table, then how will those who are unable to work survive? Here you may ask, why wouldn't God make the helpless capable of working rather than ask others to help them? We answer that Allah created an integrated and harmonious universe and subjected the means to our will. The earth responds to our work. So do plants and livestock. Sadly, over time people mistakenly think that the means are inherent to them. Let's clarify this point. A farmer may think that the crops grow exclusively because he sows seeds and irrigates. When the earth responds to him, the farmer thinks that he is the one who makes things happen in the universe. To save us from our arrogance, God occasionally makes the means at our disposal inconsistent. For example, God may occasionally cause drought or vermin to hit the farmer's crops. If the farmer were truly in control, he would never have a bad year. Put simply, just because you can produce today does not mean that you will be able to produce tomorrow. The presence of helpless people around you should make you realize that you are not in control. The one who grants the ability can take it away. God can make the helpless yesterday capable today, and the capable yesterday helpless today. Allah is the only constant. This realization is one of the critical differences between the believer and the non-believer. Both work hard to earn their livelihood. Both use the means at their disposal to get ahead in life. However, when the believer earns and provides for his or her family, he or she puts aside some of the excess to help the needy and seek God's reward. God says, And keep up the prayer and pay the prescribed alms. Whatever good you store up for yourselves, you will find it with God. He sees everything you do. Chapter 2, verse 110. By making the zakat almsgiving a pillar of faith, Allah made giving to the poor a goal for the believer. But what stops us from giving? The main source of stinginess is the fear that charity will decrease wealth. Allah made it clear. Your wealth will never decrease from charity. Allah will reward you many times over. Take a moment to think about what you earn through your work and investments compared to what God has in store for you through your charity. Compare your power to God's power. Who do you trust with your wealth? God says, The example of those who expend their wealth in the way of God is that of a grain of corn from which grow seven ears each ear containing a hundred grains. Truly God multiplies for whomsoever he will, for God is infinite and all-wise. Chapter 2, verse 261 A smart farmer invests and sows seeds in his or her land. In return, the land will more than triple or quadruple the investment. A stupid farmer keeps all the seeds in the silo because he or she is afraid that planting some will decrease the amount in storage. If the earth, which is one of God's creations, gives abundantly once you invest in it, then think about the grant of the Lord, the creator of the earth. Through this example, Allah closed the main door of stinginess for the human soul. Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, said, Beware of doing injustice. For it is darkness upon darkness on the day of judgment. And beware of stinginess, because it doomed those who were before you. It incited them to shed blood and transgress over the rights of others.
Here is another pitfall God addresses in this chapter. A wealthy person may feel annoyed when people ask him for money. He or she may be under social pressure to give it to charity. At that point, there is a struggle between greed and stinginess on one side and social status on the other. What happens next? The wealthy individual may give with resentment and follow this gift by scolding or reproaching the beggar. The Almighty says, Stop. He advises us in the Quran, A kind word and forgiveness is better than a charitable deed followed by harm. God is self-sufficient, forbearing. Chapter 2, verse 263 Constant reminders are a sure way to invalidate the rewards of giving. It is of our human nature to seek recognition and praise. However, by reminding the poor of your favor, you foster the feelings of humiliation and resentment. God warns you that such actions would cause you to be the ultimate loser. How? The poor would still get the benefit of your money, while you lose the reward. So be careful not to waste both your money and reward with a few hurtful words. Later, Allah addressed another aspect of stinginess. It happens when a generous person finds it hard to give from the best of what he or she owns. In other words, you keep the best to yourself and give the worn, torn, or already spoiled to others. God says, You who believe, give charitably from the good things you have earned and that we have produced for you from the earth. Do not give away the bad things that you yourself would only accept with your eyes closed. Remember that God is self-sufficient, worthy of all praise. Chapter 2, verse 267 Do not give something that you would not accept if it were given to you. Then, Allah warns that the devil can exploit all these avenues of stinginess. He says, The devil promises you poverty and commands you to self-gratification. God promises you forgiveness from him and abundance. God is all-encompassing, all-knowing. Chapter 2, verse 268 Lastly, in the verse under study, Allah addresses the issue of giving charity secretly or publicly, and more importantly, the true intention behind it. If you are an affluent person, then guard your family against prying eyes and wandering minds by spending openly so people would not talk ill about you. However, you should also volunteer and give secretly so that your left hand does not know what your right is doing. Ibn Abbas narrated that giving voluntary charity, also known as sadaqah, in secret, is 70 times more rewarding than giving it publicly. However, giving the obligatory zakat publicly is 25 times more rewarding than giving it in secret. Through the verses we reviewed, Allah had opened all the doors of giving before you and closed all the doors of stinginess. He protected the weak by asking their strong, believing brothers and sisters to step up. Always keep in mind that while Allah is asking you to help the weak and poor today, He would also ask everyone to help you if you fall on hard times. In an ever-changing world, if you become poor, God's commands are an asset on your side, not the burden that you may see them to be today. The Prophet, peace be upon him, said, Convey my teachings to the people, even if it is only a single verse. Please take a moment to subscribe and to share with your family and friends. Visit us at www.qurangarden.com.